All right, I give up y'all. So who is racist? Hey y'all, welcome back to another Food for Thought. So y'all, I've been, uh, just over the last couple of days, you know, I made a couple of videos about Philip DeFranco and I've made several videos looking at, you know, just the nature of violence, including my live stream, which by the way, uh, failed to post. It failed to post and I'm not exactly sure what the problem is. I went in and I checked all of my settings. I did some searching for exactly how to be sure that my live stream was not only simulcasting to YouTube, but was posting and archived there. But regardless of my settings, my post haven't been posting. So what I think I'm going to do is just leave you now behind. I'll still, until I find another solution, I'll continue to do my live streams via you now, but uh, I will be looking for another solution. So if anybody has ideas for solutions for live streaming and maybe even uh, directly from YouTube, I know that there's a way to do it. I tried to look into it and it looked a little bit more complicated than what I was kind of ready to handle at the moment, but I'd love to, again, I'd love to hear some input from you. So I wanna get down in the comments section for a minute here, if you'll forgive me. I wanna read some of the comments that were posted most recently, and these are being posted on my video about uh, Philip DeFranco, the first video. Um, it's the one that's called Philip DeFranco, Alt-Right Racist. And there have been some, you know, the, there's been an ongoing, very lively debate about this. And I just wanna read a few of the comments that I found resonated most deeply, just to get a sense of what your thoughts are about them. So Javier G says, racism, prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. That is what racism is to me. To label Phil as racist is to devalue the meaning of the word at a time when we need it most. I found that really compelling and thank you Javier G for um, that definition of racism and for kind of calling out the idea that we need a very clear understanding of racism at this time. My question to you Javier G if you'd be willing to answer this is why is it so crucial at this time that we have a clear definition of racism? What is it that you see happening or manifesting at this time that um, having a clear understanding of that word is going to be essential? So here's one from Bruce Webb. Surely you realize white people don't actually exist, no? However, people who've been indoctrinated for generations to believe that whiteness, AKA white superiority, entitlement, impunity is a natural fact of life and or that capitalism is the best thing humanity has ever devised and or that imperialism, neo-colonialism is simply how the world works, do exist. Harmful ideologies must be toppled, discredited and totally demolished, abolished. Deporting people doesn't address any of that. Deporting, displacing ideologies out of mass consciousness might just do the trick though. Revolutions are nothing if not revolutions of collective consciousness. Yeah, thanks Bruce. The reason that I love this comment so much is that it gets away from this idea of a, you know, a real race, right? Because whiteness isn't actually a race, it's a phenotype, right? The phenotype that we recognize as whiteness can happen regardless of where you come from. You can be European, you can be African, you can be Asian and still have white skin. I think what we're talking about when we discuss whiteness is an attitude <laughs> that has been developed over time since the 17th century when it was created to be this social control mechanism, right? So the thing that I really want to address in this video is the idea of what it means to really be racist. It seems to me right now that people are understanding racism as this action of individuals towards other individuals or even a 
way of thinking of a particular individual towards other individuals. Now, I'm not gonna try to make a big thing about, you know, what is systemic racism, right? Because it's really hard to define it for people. It's easy to be skeptical about it. But I do think that we can look at racism as an ideology that has been spread throughout the world in the same way, you know, Christianity or, you know, Islamic faith has been spread throughout the world. These are just ideas that people have embraced and believe that don't really have anything to do with the facts. They don't have anything to do with science or biology except that people accept them as if they are scientific or biological. So let's say, for example, we're having a conversation about poor black communities, and you want to argue the fact that those communities tend to be more violent than other communities. And you attribute the fact that that violence exists in those communities because the individuals in those communities are black. Now, regardless of whether or not it is true that those communities are more violent or even that they are more violent because the individuals in those communities are black, to accept that as a reality is racist. <laughs> in other words, even if you understand it to be true that somehow black people are inferior to other races, it's racist. So it's kind of amusing, kind of sad, and kind of scary when I find myself in discussion with individuals who want to deny the existence of racism, but yet they want to justify the existence of certain types of laws. They want to justify the actions of the police. They want to act justify the actions of the state by pointing out that there are these inherent flaws in the individuals who have been targeted by the state, by the police, right? So again, the question is, what does it really mean to be racist. I think it's really easy and lets a lot of people off the hook when we think of the stereotype of, you know, the Southern redneck who's not very bright, not very well educated, who, you know, calls people, you know, niggers. But I think that that's a dangerous oversimplification of an ideology that is so complex and so pervasive throughout our society. About six months ago, for example, I made a video just calling into question that there were Africans who existed in Europe. And so in the, in the Game of Thrones series or in the Game of Thrones novels, it wouldn't be unrealistic to have more Africans present. I was amazed by the people who came to the defense of the author of those novels for, you know, having a personal choice that they wanted that world to look a certain way, but weren't willing to accept that that personal choice that favored the characters being white might have something to do with inherent racial bias. Another thing that I think would be really helpful is if people weren't so triggered automatically by the idea of racism, like I can accept the fact that I have racial bias. I was raised in a society where blacks were being targeted uh, violently by whites with no legal recourse for, you know, the generation before mine. So, you know, before the 60s, if you were murdered by a white person, uh, you were likely, that person was likely going to get off for the crime. You know, like in the 60s, if a white person murdered a black person, it is very likely that they were going to get away with murder. So it's only logical if you live in a society like that, you're going to be a little bit wary of the person who knows that they can kill you with impunity. It's kind of like in that movie, The Purge, that day that it's legal to commit a crime, everybody goes inside and locks their doors. Well, there was a time in at least the United States state's history where it was the purge pretty much every day if you were a person of color. That was very recent history and so for people who have that memory of that time it makes sense that there's going to be a little bit of wariness. Now it's certainly up to black people to be aware that this is something that's been internalized. It's something that they need to work on. <laughs> Mistrusting all white people probably isn't healthy, probably isn't logical, but I think it's up to people who can be identified as white to be aware that that whiteness has been seen 
as a threat to black people for centuries. So it's likely there's some work that's gonna need to be done on that end too. What work exactly? I'm not sure, but at least it's worth a conversation. What I find instead is that there's a complete lack of tolerance from most people, regardless of their race, to have a conversation about structural or ideological racism that exists in a country where it's as prevalent as Christianity or Judaism or any other belief system that's not based on fact, but still holds a strong place in the minds of the society. You can even look at superstition. Of course, I know that walking under a ladder isn't particularly bad luck or that spilling salt isn't really bad luck, but I still throw a pinch of salt over my shoulder if I spill some, and I still avoid walking under ladders. Why? I don't know. Often it's things that are said to us from the time we're very small that aren't meant to intend any harm, but do instill in us a certain type of bias towards certain types of behavior sorts, certain types of actions. And I think of racism in the same way. It's not necessarily that your parents didn't like black people or didn't like white people, but there were certain ideas that had just been passed down from generation to generation without ever really being questioned that have led us to have a certain way of thinking that keeps people separated based on the color of their skin. And if it weren't true, we wouldn't have so many schools and communities and other spaces where most of the people who are there are of the same race. Even in Detroit, where the population is about 80% African American, I go into many businesses and discover that I am the only African American present. That has to mean something. So Philip DeFranco isn't racist. Dave Rubin isn't racist. Sargon of Akkad isn't racist. Paul Joseph Watson isn't racist. Lauren Southern isn't racist. Corey and Tara McCarthy aren't racist. In fact, it doesn't seem to matter who becomes the target of a line of question about potential racial bias. It seems like there will always be someone there to justify the flawed thinking, the behavior, the violent rhetoric to point out the fact that racism really doesn't exist. Except you're racist if you call someone a racist. Despite the fact that early on in this video a definition of racism was provided, I don't think we're ever going to get people to agree on what racism really is. And my guess is if we can't name it and define it, we probably are never going to get past it. I don't know. What do you think? That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto.